Hey, what is up, guys? It's Thunderstruck115, and today I got another response. This time to a YouTuber by the name of Under the Mayo, who, if you're into Doom Eternal videos, you probably have heard of. But when it comes to anything that isn't Doom Eternal, this dude is a walking clown. Well, not too long ago, he had this absolute dumpster fire of a stream where he played Elden Ring and was just bitching about it the entire time for stupid-ass reasons. And I'm not even exaggerating, it's probably one of the worst videos I have ever seen. Now, Under the Mayo deleted the whole stream himself, and quite frankly, I wasn't going to sit through all those hours just to do this video. But thankfully, a YouTuber by the name of Under the Rankling Sean has uploaded a stream highlights video titled Under the Mayo Disaster Stream on Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a generic fantasy game. If you want to see it for yourself, I'll have it linked in the description. Go show him some love. And I know usually I cover COD content, specifically zombies, but this was just too juicy for me to pass up. So grab some alcohol, because you're going to need it. Actually, on second thought, don't, because you're probably going to have enough brain damage by the end of this. Anyways, let's roll the cancer. You don't know what he's like? He's purposely trying not to enjoy this game. What are you talking about? Okay, all right, hey, tell you what. Tell me exactly what to do, all right? I'll listen to you, specifically. Tell me what to do so I can enjoy it. Yeah, and that's the, that, that's the type of game that I don't want to play. Been on, I've been live for four and a half hours. I don't like these kinds of games. I did this for charity. Do I have the bow? No, I have not found a bow. It's not about it being hard. It's about me being bored. Fuck off. So there, Under the Wrangling Sean gives us a sneak preview of the kind of stuff we can be expecting. See why I wanted to respond to this? What build do you plan to make? I don't know what builds are. This motherfucker seriously does not know what a fucking build is. Hell, I didn't start really playing Souls games until last February where I picked up Dark Souls Remastered and even I knew what a build was. It's the kind of stats and equipment you're going to be focusing on getting to suit your playstyle. I don't know anything about this game. Uh, I'm playing on controller. Uh, so guys, I promised you a five hour uh, stream. You will get a five hour stream. Uh, and I'm going to do a donation goal of uh, $25 for an additional hour on top of that. And then every hour after that, it goes up by 10. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. Imagine thinking that people should have to pay you money for the privilege of watching you play a fucking video game, dude. This is like as bad if not worse than fucking Wings of Redemption. <sighs> Alright guys, the, I hate to be like this, but if you want this stream to continue, it's gonna be $10 an hour. So we need to make $10 of donations per hour for this shit to continue. I'm just gonna get off. Also, quick note, that text blurb you saw was not from me, it was from Under the Rankling Sean. If it's from me, it'll be in the impact font, which looks like this. Otherwise, assume it's from him. Guys, I'm only going one hour at a time, so if you, like, make a large donation, I will have to figure in the rising rate. I'm going, I'm going an extra 10 every hour. This is also a, a, a PlayStation 5 fundraiser stream, so you guys can get your, your Ragnarok video. Oh boy, you get to donate to the noble cause that is buying under the mayo a PS5. Really making a difference here. But honestly, it's kind of pathetic how he thinks people should have to pay for the privilege of getting him a PS5 just for a God of War Ragnarok video. Especially considering God of War Ragnarok is also going to release on PS4 as well. Like he's trying to frame it that people other than him are going to benefit from this. How's the world look? I mean, it looks like a fantasy game, very, lots of green, brown, I got yellow trees, green, brown, and yellow, which are colors that are not entirely pleasing to me. God, this is such a nitpick. I mean, I guess if you think it looks generic, then I suppose that's a you problem. Personally, I think Elden Ring looks very distinct. I'd say Dark Souls 1 is more guilty of looking like a generic fantasy game. But still, it's like he's trying to find reasons to hate this game. It's like if you took Devorah's Mortal Kombat 11 default costume and then just like stretched it over a world. 
You don't know what he's like. He's purposely trying not to enjoy this game. What are you talking about? Okay. All right. Hey, tell you what. Tell me exactly what to do. All right. I'll listen to you specifically. Tell me what to do so I can enjoy it. I don't know what this game's about. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, no shit. You don't know what the game's about. You just left the tutorial area. If you need guidance, then the Sights of Grace will point you in the direction you need to go to progress the story. Or you can choose to explore, because, you know, it's an open world game. <laughs> I don't know where I'm supposed to go, if I'm supposed to fight someone, if I'm not. If I should be exploring and looking for things, I don't know what things are supposed to be used for. I don't fucking know, okay? So tell me, tell me where to go. Tell me where the fun is. Follow the trail of light coming from the Sights of Grace. Holy shit, dude. It literally explains this to you as soon as you rest at the first one. Exploring. I am exploring. I've been picking up fucking plants. I'm picking up plants. I killed some animals. Here, look. I picked up another plant. Jesus Christ. If that's your definition of exploring, then God help you. Walking a few feet to pick up a few flowers and kill two non-hostile entities is not really exploring. If you actually explored around Limgrave, you'll find like a really large enemy encampment with plenty of enemies to fight. There's also a little outpost you can find. There's also the map of Limgrave that you can collect. There's a cave that has an optional wolf boss in it. And there's also a treasure chest that takes you to the Celia Crystal Caves where you have more enemies to fight and also some smithing stones for you to upgrade your weapons. Uh, no need to be angry, just explore the world. Well, don't fucking tell me that I'm intentionally trying not to have fun, all right? Okay, the, the, the run, run being on, on B or circle and not letting me change, move the camera while running is driving me crazy. I'm gonna see if I can rebind. I can bind this to, to R3. Is there anything on R3 right now? No, nothing on R3. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Oh no, and then that's gonna make me roll. And there's no- is there no toggle run? Is there a way to toggle run? Or do you have to hold it the entire time? There's no toggle run, you have to hold it the whole time. Because it's really uncomfortable for me to hold run with my index finger and then steer the controller with my thumb. You could try rebinding it to a bumper or something, instead of, you know, giving up when clicking in the thumbstick is an ideal. Or while sprinting, if you change the direction that you're moving with the left thumbstick, the camera will turn to face wherever it is you're heading. Like, I've sunk about 60 hours into this game, and the camera has not been an issue for me, even when sprinting. So I'm just not gonna run anywhere. I'm not gonna run. Well, I'm tired of... Okay, because look, if I hold run, I can't... I can't turn the camera. So I have to hold run, and then when I want to... I have to let go of run, and then turn the camera, and then hold run again. And I find it really annoying. If you could just... have run being toggled, that would be very nice. Like, seriously, he didn't notice the camera fucking turning when he changed direction while running? Is this dude, like, blind or something? <laughs> Workman, I honestly, I don't want to go back because I found those earlier areas really boring. And those enemies I found boring too. What follows is a brief construction montage. Skipping past this because this goes on for a while, it's just Mayo doing the same stupid shit. I think y'all get the idea. If you want to watch the full thing, a link in the description. Killing barely any hostile enemies, not finding any dungeons, I'm pretty sure y'all understand. How do I feel about delayed attacks and the long combos? What long combos? Wondering if you find waiting to dodge delayed attacks. Uh, no, this style of gameplay I don't find fun. I don't find entertaining in the slightest. I've seen people do it very well and I'm not entertained by it. Sorry. So if you don't find the Soul style of gameplay fun, then why did you buy Elden Ring? <laughs> I mean, it would be one thing if he'd never played a Souls game before, just bought the game because of how insanely popular it was and realized he didn't like it. No, this motherfucker has played Dark Souls 1 and Sekiro before this. And he's on record stating that he doesn't like either of those games. 
So why the hell would you buy Elden Ring, which pretty much copies the Dark Souls gameplay style and just makes it faster paced and puts it in an open world? I mean, I've heard Sekiro is a little bit different from the other Souls games, but when Elden Ring was about to come out before I decided to buy it, I instead got Dark Souls Remastered and tried that out because prior to that, my only experience with the Souls series was about 15 minutes of the original release of Dark Souls 1 on PC, which I uninstalled and refunded after 15 minutes because of how fucking broken that was. Like, that shit was unplayable. But I got Dark Souls Remastered on Xbox because I heard it was basically just Dark Souls 1, except it actually worked. And when I'm not dealing with bugs and severe performance issues, it's actually a great game. After beating the game and playing a little bit of New Game Plus, I got Elden Ring and I'm enjoying the hell out of that too. But if I didn't like Dark Souls 1 Remastered, then I wouldn't have bought Elden Ring because it would have been clear to me that the Souls gameplay doesn't appeal to me. But you didn't like the Souls games that you played previously, yet somehow you thought it was a good idea to buy and play Elden Ring, which has the same style of gameplay, when you're on record saying you don't like it? I've been putting it off because I'm not a fan of Dark Souls. I've mentioned a couple times that I don't like Dark Souls, and before we get to Sekiro, I need to explain why. Getting that stuff requires exploration of a world that bores me so much that I don't enjoy being there, and engaging in combat that bores me so much that I want to avoid it. This or Outriders? Well, I would ra I'd rather play Outriders, because I like shooters. I don't like this kind of melee combat. Elden Ring to spread out to engage you for long. Yeah, this, like... I mean, it's been, what? two hours now and I'm like everything is still just grass and fog. Well no shit dumbass, you're still in the same area. Go west and you'll find Lyurnia of the Lakes, which is very blue. Go east and you'll find Kylid, which is very red. Go south and you'll find the Weeping Peninsula, which okay admittedly that one does kind of look similar to Limgrave, but not exactly the same. Plus you'll find enemies to fight and dungeons to explore. Rocks. No, I, I, I don't find this interesting. You can go wherever you want. Well, I, I don't want to go anywhere because I'm not interested in this world. That's a big problem. That's one of the big problems for me. I don't want to go anywhere because I don't like how the combat feels and I don't like how this game looks and I'm not interested in fantasy. Care to elaborate or explain why you're continuing to play a game you don't like? Sars, I'm not saying anything mean about this game. How's the world look? Uh, I mean, it looks like a fantasy game. Very... Lots of green, brown, and got yellow trees. Green, brown, and yellow, which are colors that are not entirely pleasing. I don't know what this game's about. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know where I'm supposed to go, if I'm supposed to fight someone, if I'm not. If I should be exploring and looking for things, I don't know what things are supposed to be used for. I don't fucking know, okay? Under the Ranklin, Sean gives plenty more examples. I'm just gonna skip past the rest of this, because I think y'all get the point. This is, like, everything that I hate in a game can if I want. I don't want to do any of it. I just want to know what you guys think that I need so that I can fight the other boss that I couldn't beat. Andre, I know, but you guys keep telling me that it's an open world. I can do whatever I want. I don't want to do any of it. Then don't fucking play it then. Maybe you're finding it boring because what you're doing isn't even scratching the surface. Like, go explore. Find dungeons and enemies to fight. Use, use their souls so you can level up and upgrade your stats, or get smithing stones and upgrade your weapons. What do I think of the art direction? Land? What do I think of the art direction? Land? What do I think of the art direction? Land? What do I think of the art direction? Bland? Brown? Dreary? Normal? Uh, yes, I find this art style bland. I find Dark, Dark Souls art style bland, also. Look, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this and I just think that like a whole bunch of games could just probably look like this. This looks like any kind of dark dungeon fantasy game where everything's brown and gray. It's just how it, this is how it looks to me.
and all I know is that for three hours now, all I've seen is brown and gray and rocks and trees and nor and just dudes that look normal and eh, eh, just doesn't do anything for me. I think it's kind of dull. I'm barely one percent into the game. Yeah, I know. Well, one percent of the game has been three hours. So, this is, this is what I've seen. Then explore out of Limgrave. You guys asked me what my opinion is. All I can answer is on what I've seen. Dudes with a hundred arms are pretty normal. I haven't seen any dudes with a hundred arms. And that's creature design, that's not art. Yes it is! Creature design is part of the art style. Elden Ring's style is dark fantasy. Compare this to something like Metroid, which is distinctly sci-fi. Or Zelda, which is kind of cartoonish fantasy. Or Halo, which mixes together militaristic, cartoony, and minimalistic. And this is done in service of the art style of those games. I could list more examples, but I think y'all get the point. Sure, okay, look, yeah, of course individual creature design is part of art, yes. But when I'm talking about when people are like, hey, what do you think of the art design? I'm like, the overall look of the game. That's what I'm talking about. The overall art design. I'm not talking about the way individual enemies look. Flashback. And nor and just dudes that look normal. And you're fighting knights and dragons. Damn, this dude somehow manages to contradict himself more than fucking Tim Hansen. And that's saying something. Yeah, and I, marvelous. And I'm not dogging on this game at all. How's the world look? Uh, I mean, it looks like a fantasy game. Very, lots of green, brown, and got yellow trees. Green, brown, and yellow, which are colors that are not entirely pleasing. I don't know what this game's about. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know where I'm supposed to go, if I'm supposed to fight someone, if I'm not. If I should be exploring and looking for things, I don't know what things are supposed to be used for. I don't fucking know, okay? Have I said anything negative about this other than, like, my subjective, I think the art style is dull? Other than that? Hexagon. Yeah, I do have that mindset because dicking around this place and beating bosses on the side is not something that I enjoy. If I'm going to be dicking around in an open world, then I want to be stealing cars and getting in crazy cop chases like in GTA. I'm not sure why you're expecting to steal cars and get in cop chases in a fucking Souls game. If you want GTA, go play GTA. It's quite clear that Elden Ring is not a game for you. Not running around in in tall grass picking up flowers. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of the game is not that. It's finding interesting locales, clearing dungeons, fighting enemies, taking down bosses, dying and learning from your mistakes, quest lines with NPCs, treasure to collect, your character to upgrade, stats to improve, weapons to improve. God, this is so painful to sit through and we're not even halfway through yet. Fuck soloing Margaret at level 10. Yeah, I know, but I don't want to run around grinding, fighting all the other enemies, because I find it's really boring. I don't want to just grind. This is why I don't like open world RPGs. I don't like that it's like, oh, here's the boss you gotta fight, but you're not strong enough, so run around and grind a bunch of other stuff to get a higher level. I don't like that. So if you don't like open world RPGs and you don't like Souls games, then why did you buy Elden Ring? Which is both of those things. Besides, I wouldn't even necessarily call what you really need to do to level up grinding. What I think of as grinding is something like, say, in Metroid 1, running back and forth, killing the same enemies over and over just to get your health back. In Elden Ring, I never felt like I had to do anything similar to that. It was more like, explore more, find a new location, fight through it, and do the fun content that it is. And by playing through it naturally, I'm going to get enough souls or runes to upgrade my character's stats. Or find a cool new weapon. Or some materials to bolster my existing weapons. Or new ashes for me to summon. I mean, I suppose you could grind if you want to, but you don't have to do that. You can just explore, find stuff to do, and do it before coming back to tackle the boss. Like for example, I was stuck on Godric the Grafted for a while. I realized, okay, maybe my level's a bit low. So I explored Limgrave some more, went east to Kylid for a bit, 
and just did some optional side content. Doing so got me some level ups, found some smithing stones so I could upgrade my halberd, and then when I came back I was better equipped to fight the boss. Sure, it was still hard, but I was able to get through it easier because I had explored and found some stuff to upgrade my character. I've never liked that kind of game design. You don't have to grind, you can explore other areas. Yeah, but the exploring is grindy to me. Because I don't want to explore any of it, and I don't like any of the enemies I'm fighting there. So it's grindy. Dark Souls 1 and 2 and 3 are different than Dark Souls 1. Oh, really? Are they fantasy settings with player-controlled camera? With slow, heavy melee combat that where there's no animation canceling? And you're fighting knights and dragons? And you have to dodge roll to, to to escape attacks, and then get in a couple of counter hits, and then dodge roll again. And you have large inventories full of stuff you're finding around the world. Really? Are they that different? Because I don't think they are. Well, yeah, they all have the same base mechanics because they're all games in the same goddamn series. But that doesn't mean that there can't be variety between them. For example, Dark Souls 1 is slower, more grounded. Dark Souls 3, on the other hand, is a lot more faster paced. Bloodborne pushes a more aggressive playstyle, as from what I understand, that game only has one shield and it sucks, and instead you parry with guns, and if an enemy hits you, you can get your health back by attacking it quickly. And Sekiro apparently relies a lot on parrying, as well as stances. Like, the only two Souls games I've played are Dark Souls and Elden Ring. But even I know each of the games have their own little quirks about them that makes them different from each other. But no shit, they're all going to have the same core. Yeah, guys, stop recommending me Souls games. I don't like Souls games. Do I have to make it clear? Do I have to make it more clear than that? I don't like the camera. I really don't like the camera. I don't like the way Melee feels. I don't like the way that dodging feels. I don't like the, the way the combat is structured. I don't like the inventory. I don't like the exploration. I don't like the stat management and upgrade system. I don't fucking like any of it. You do realize you don't have to play every single game your audience tells you to, right? Like, that isn't lost on you? Like, it's quite clear, you don't like Souls games, so you don't have to cave to your audience if they keep demanding you play a Souls game, because obviously you don't like it. Like, I've had several people recommend Fallout New Vegas to me, but I never bought it or played it because I know about myself that I don't really like RPGs like that. Like, I tried getting into The Outer Worlds, I tried getting into The Witcher, and the same thing happened for both, like, I played for a bit, had a fairly fun time, but I really just fell off and couldn't really get back into them. But, quite clearly, I know I don't like RPGs. Does that mean they're bad games? No, it just means they're not for me. So I'll let the people that like them play them, whereas I'll just play the games in the genres I do like. You don't have to force yourself to play a Souls game if it's clear you don't like Souls games. Like, you could have made your fundraiser for some other game. I don't like the art style. I'm not that into the music. I don't like lock-on. Like, I mean, do you guys just really not get it? I just, I'm so tired of it. This is the same thing I had with, uh... This is the same problem I had with Dark Souls. Is that, like, I would die and then I had to go back, like, five rooms before. I had to keep going through the same, same fucking rooms. Oh no, a game is punishing you for dying? Oh, the horror! Well, Under the Mayo, since you like Doom Eternal, isn't it a bad thing that when in Doom Eternal, when you die, you have to start the encounter all over again? Like, two can play at that game, motherfucker. Like, a game punishing you for dying is not a bad thing. What's even more ironic is he actually complained about Bayonetta not punishing you for dying. In fact, here's the clip. If you can simply refill your health by dying immediately in the next fight and respawning, then you've been robbed of the satisfaction of finishing a fight with high health. It feels great to make it through a tough combat encounter having taken little to no damage, when there's a reason for it. In a game like the original God of War, you had to find health refill stations. So if you left a fight with a lot of health, you were going into the next fight in a good position. It made you want to protect your health and play smart, due to the consequences of leaving a fight with low health. 
So if I could make one change to Bayonetta, it would be to remove the refilling health mechanic and instead tie health regeneration to the torture attacks you can use once you get a full magic meter. We are currently at 45 for the next, uh, for the next hour. No, no, we're at 10, we're at 10 out of 45, so 35 more and I'll, I'll tack another hour onto it. Think of it as a fundraiser for the PlayStation 5, so that you guys can get your Ragnarok video. I know you want that. No, I, like, if, if it keeps going up and people want to donate more and more for me to keep playing, I will honor that. I have already prepared for that. I know everyone wants a Ragnarok video from me. I am the guy that everyone wants to hear about, wants to hear from, from Ragnarok. I know that. Literally, the only reason I'd want to see a God of War Ragnarok video from you is so I can see someone like Brother Nier or Hypocrite Hunter make fun of it. God, he's such a narcissist. At this point, I'm not sure if I'd be of the mentality of not giving him a cent and encouraging people not to donate to this ass clown, or intentionally donating a lot of money to him so he has to suffer through Elden Ring more. You know, I get grumpy because people come in here and they're like, LOL, why, are you, why aren't your weapons upgraded? And I was like, because I followed the advice of the chat and I upgraded my health. Those two things don't have anything to do with each other. To upgrade your health, you level up vitality. To upgrade your weapons, you use smithing stones at the blacksmith and the round table hold. Those are two separate resources. Sure, upgrading your weapons does cost some souls, but it's such a small amount that you can use them by using the small rune items or killing just a few enemies and then you'll have plenty. Honestly, I feel like this is a game where someone like you would benefit from someone next to you helping you more than a chat. Yeah, and that's the, that, that's the type of game that I don't want to play. Oh, did I just accident? So, so the button for skipping dialogue is also the same button that will cause you to accidentally accept a challenge if you're skipping dialogue? Is that what just happened? Pay fucking attention, hey, well, then. Here's the thing, it, Spankworthy, I'm also a sweat lord, but I have to enjoy the game to want to go forward sweating. I'm a contradiction-filled person. You enjoy discovering games and not being handheld, but you also don't enjoy the lack of hand-holding, waypointing in from software games. No, I, I already talked about this in one of my last videos. This is not about a contradiction. I enjoy discovery and exploration in limited amounts. You take a Resident Evil game and you're in the one map, you have to figure out that one map. That's great. I love that. I love a puzzle-like map. What I don't like is a puzzle-like world. But why? Okay, just a quick question. Would anybody else describe the world of Elden Ring as puzzle-like? Because that is not the impression I got when playing this game. When I think puzzle-like world, I think of something like a Metroid game where you have to keep the entire game world in mind as you're progressing in order to figure out where you need to go next once you have the tool to progress. Elden Ring isn't like that. You just find a place, like a castle or a cave or something, go through it, kill the shit in there, grab the resources, fight the boss. Very rarely will you not be able to activate something because you need to do something somewhere else. And even in the few cases where that is true, usually there's a marker on your map, like when I killed General Radon over in Kylid, and then it caused the star to fall, opening the path to the underground area, it left a marker on my map telling me where to find that. Or when I was doing the side quest in the Volcano Manor in order to gain access to Praetor Rikard, like, it would tell me where to find the invasion targets. Sure, you might have to explore to find shit, but once you find something, Dealing with it's pretty straightforward, and usually you can do it right as you find it, unless you're just under-equipped for that area, in which case you just explore somewhere else and then come back to it later. That's not what I'd call puzzle-like. I love an inventory of eight things that I have to deal with. What I don't love is inventories full of like hundreds of different kinds of shit that I have to look at and then a list of fucking 15 stats that I have to study. I don't like that. Then why did you buy Elden Ring, a game with that specific kind of gameplay? Again, you played Dark Souls and it had this exact same system and I'm pretty sure you didn't like it there, so what made you think you were gonna like it here? 
and, and, and when you put it on top of a game where I don't care for the art style, I hate the camera, and I don't enjoy the combat or the physics, then, you know, that's that's quite a losing formula for me. Leo doesn't like being overwhelmed. No, I don't like being overwhelmed. I don't like starting a game and having tutorial page after tutorial page explaining all these different mechanics and having all these different items and stats where I just like, I'm reading all these stats that influence my character, but I don't know how they influence my character because I don't know how the game plays. Well, yeah, when you're new to the game, then you gotta learn the mechanics. And the fact that he has an issue with having tutorial page after tutorial page is kind of ironic considering that's exactly how Doom Eternal handles things. Yet he slobs on the knob of that game. Are you even giving the game a try? I've been on- I've been live for four and a half hours! I don't like these kinds of games, I did this for charity! Do I have the bow? No, I have not found a bow. It's not about it being hard, it's about me being bored. Fuck off. It's not charity, it's for you to buy a PS5. Like, I don't have an issue with you being up front that that's what you're going to spend the money on, but don't act like it's some kind of charity, because it's not. <laughs> charity would be something like donating to cancer research or the orphan hugging initiative. Not buying your own PS5 so you can make a video for your own channel to make money from ad revenue. And the way he's just getting mad at his own chat, this is such a fucking Wings of Redemption moment. Except at least with Wings of Redemption it's kind of funny, whereas here it's just painful. Have I tried Bloodborne? No, I've seen people play Bloodborne and it looks boring to me. For those of you who do not understand, I don't care for the art style. The music bores me. I don't like this kind of camera control. I don't like the way that slow melee combat feels with no animation cancelling. I don't like large inventories full of items to inspect and large lists of stats to memorize and understand. I don't like any of this, okay? I'm d I did this as a charity goal. It doesn't matter if I'm good or bad at it. I love playing a game that I'm bad at and that I have to get good at, but I have to enjoy the game that I'm playing to want to get good at it. I don't enjoy this. If I don't enjoy it, I'm not going to get good at it. If that's too hard for you to understand, just don't watch my stream. You didn't have to do Elden Ring for your fundraiser, you could have done some other game that you would have liked better. The fact that you put Elden Ring as the fundraiser goal is your own damn fault. I welcome any other viewers or, or new, new people to the stream to come in and say something stupid or be an asshole. I'm happy to ban as many people. As I have to. Say what you want about Grifter Gaming getting pissed off at his own chat when he was desperately defending COD Vanguard, but at least he didn't threaten to fucking ban them because they disagreed. This is just a new low. Like, holy shit. No, I'm not upset with chat. I'm, there's just been a few idiots that have come in here, and I've banned them pretty quickly. Smithing stones, right. But I have to go to the, to the fucking... I can't just do it here, right? I have to travel and load the area and run to the blacksmith to upgrade something and then travel and load back to a save point here and then run back to where I am, right? I have to go through all that if I want to upgrade a weapon right now. Okay, maybe From Software could have made it so you could upgrade your weapons at any side of grace instead of having you load into the round table hold and then load back to where you were. But even still, this is a fucking nitpick. Oh man, I wish these things were more obvious. I missed, th I overlooked them all the time. What do you mean, man? It's right there. Yeah, I, I don't know. They just, they look like everything else to me. I wish they were like big, big beaming, like light sources instead of, I don't know. They, I, I overlook them constantly. It just, the whole game has this, has this kind of like desaturated look to it where everything is like yellow and brown and green and gray. And I feel like that's been most of my experience is just those colors. And so things just don't stand out to me. Dude, the sights of Grace are really bright fucking yellow. Not to mention there's a bunch of little light swirls around it before you've discovered them. If you can't find the sights of Grace, that's just your dumbass not paying attention. 
Like, it's like this dude's just trying to find as many reasons to hate this game as possible, and they're just the dumbest things imaginable. Like, finding genuine criticisms for Elden Ring is not difficult. Like, the boss variety could be better, and as a lot of them rely on roll spam, whereas I feel like Dark Souls 1 had better variety. The hitboxes can be a bit iffy at times. There are some areas of the open world that don't really have much meaning and are just kind of empty, negative space. The game has some issues with the performance. The game on PC is capped at 60 FPS, even though that has not been the standard for at least 15 years. The crafting system is a little underdeveloped. Despite being a single-player game, it doesn't have a pause feature, even in offline mode. Okay, so this is Thunderstruck from the future. I just found out that Elden Ring actually does have a pause feature, but it's hidden away in the menu explanation tab for some reason. Why FromSoft put it there of all places, or didn't label it that it was a pause feature, is beyond me, but it does have one. Just wanted to make that clarification. But instead, you focus on the dumbest shit out there to complain about, which is either a non-issue, extremely subjective, or a nitpick at best. Can't believe he's fighting Godric with five hours of barely trying. What do you mean, barely trying? I got- I've got- I got to him. I mean, uh, like, Nimorov 11111. Do you have something to say? Go to Stormhill Shack to upgrade the dog. You have to go back to- You have to go back to the hub to- Why can't I just upgrade them in the menu? Why do you think you can fast travel between sites of grace, dumbass? I can skip the castle and go to the next area? Oh, that would be great. How can I do that? I'd love to see something other than a castle. It's only been five hours. I would love to see anything other than a castle, rocks, trees, and grass. We were going to end about an hour and a half from now. So now we're ending two and a half hours from now. And if we hit another $15, that'll be three and a half hours from now. Thank you, Maynard. Thank you, Dashbeard. Thank you, Godric, for the donations. You guys are helping me get a PlayStation 5 so I can do my God of War Ragnarok video. This isn't just for me partying and shit. This is so I can get the God of War Ragnarok video done on PS5. So, yeah, a lot of people tell me, hey, go back and explore more. I don't like the exploration. I don't like anything about this game. So telling me to go explore more really doesn't help the situation. Yes, it does, because it gets you materials that you can use to craft useful items, upgrade your weapons, as well as souls you can use to level up your stats. There's just no good choice here, because if I go out and explore more and fight those other enemies that bore me to death, I'm going to be bored and I'm going to hate it. If I stay here against the boss, I'm going to be bored I'm going to hate it. You know, no, I would, I would definitely play Outriders over this. I at least like shooters. I don't like slow, clunky melee games with player-controlled camera. I don't like fantasy settings. I don't like the art style. I, I don't care about the music. He says he doesn't like the combat, but the only reason he's given is that you can't animation cancel, which is fucking stupid, because that kind of defeats the point. He says he doesn't like the player-controlled camera, yet he never elaborates why, and why having control over the camera is a bad thing is beyond me, because if anything, that means you never have to worry about the camera not being optimal, because you can just change it to whatever suits you best. Or better yet, just use the lock-on feature if you hate controlling the camera so much. People are saying you might enjoy it if you level up a bit more. They've been saying that for hours. So I went and I explored for like three hours, killing a bunch of stupid enemies. I didn't enjoy that either. Bad Prophet, I, I already went and explored the South for like three hours and upgraded my vigor to level 21. It doesn't mean that I am like this game anymore. I have liked this game equal from the moment I started it to now at the six and a half hour point, which is not at all. You guys knew that I didn't like this kind of game, but you still donated to the charity anyway, okay? And whose fucking fault is that for making it your fundraiser goal in the first place? You, motherfucker! You can't expect me to like this. I don't like anything about these games. To be fair, this game does tons of mechanics that you like. Jumping and heavy attacks, affect enemy poise, large... 
Mad Prophet, when have I said this game is badly made? When have I said that? I have not said this game is badly made. When did he say that you said it was badly made? Like, this dude is blatantly strawmanning more than fucking Chopper. And dear god, I still have at least another five minutes on this fucking video. Just because a game is made with a philosophy that I like, doesn't mean I'm gonna like it. If it's outside of genres and physics and art style and all kinds of stuff that I do like, outside of a game's design. Calero, I, I yell because I hear the same goddamn thing every 15 minutes. Maybe if you actually listened to your chat, they wouldn't be fucking repeating themselves. <laughs> Morgan, that doesn't even make sense. Because if you ignore that stuff right... If you go into Doom Eternal and you have no idea what the fuck you're doing, and you ignore what the game is showing you, you die. You don't progress. But when Elden Ring does the exact same thing, it's a problem. Under the mayo, you gotta... Keep that same energy. No, because I've made it through a, through several hours of this game, and I've made it through multiple areas, I'm, I'm on different boss fights, and I don't feel that I, I'm any better at this game. And this has nothing to do with the game's quality at all. This game wants me to do things that I don't want to do. But this game wants me to run around and exploring worlds that bore me and fighting enemies that bore me so that I am stronger to, to beat boss fights that bore me. No, I'm not going back to explore the map anymore. I did that for three hours and it was super fucking boring. You guys you guys are trying to, to get me to engage in, in this game in a way that's going to make me like it. I'm not going to like this game. There's literally nothing I like about this game or Dark Souls in general. I don't like big open worlds, I don't like large inventories full of a whole bunch of items and stats. I don't- I fucking hate player controlled camera, especially in slow, clunky, clunky, heavy melee combat with no animation cancelling. I don't like the art style, I don't care for the music. I mean, what can you guys not understand about this? Okay, Mayo, let me explain exactly what I don't understand about this. You say you hate all those things you just mentioned. Yet, you still thought it was a good idea to make Elden Ring your fundraiser goal, even though it's been advertised to be all of those things you just mentioned. Relatively slow-paced melee combat, player-controlled camera, large open world, exploration. That's like if you had a peanut allergy, and you knew you had a peanut allergy, and you had a can of peanuts that was clearly labeled as peanuts, you decide to open it, and chug the whole can, and then say, why the hell am I getting an allergic reaction? Like, that is the level of intelligence on display from Under the Mayo. If these boss fights are boring, you love boring. I'm not saying that they are boring, I'm saying that I find them boring. and complaining that you can't drift all the time. But I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm not saying that they should change this game. I'm not saying they should make it different. Yes, you fucking were. If you're not complaining, then what the fuck do you call this? I don't like big open worlds. I don't like large inventories full of a whole bunch of items and stats. I don't... I fucking hate player controlled camera especially in slow clunky clunky heavy melee combat with no animation canceling i don't like the art style i don't care for the music this game isn't defensive you can go aggressive if you want yeah but look you you're talking from the perspective of someone who knows how to play this stuff when you say you don't like the game's art design do you just mean the general look or the areas are really boring both if you head east and go along the secret path, so you might find some more visually appealing areas. I might. Most of this game has been gray, green, brown, and yellow. And I also don't like fantasy settings. I'm bored by castles and knights and skeleton guys and dragons and, and that stuff. So you hate castles and knights and skeleton guys and dragons. Yet at the same time, you like Doom Eternal even though that has castles and knights 
and skeleton guys and dragons. He just has no idea what the fuck he's talking about, does he? It's not my stuff. Oh, man, this, this game is still just so brown and gray and yellow and dreary to me. I mean, I, like, if people like this, cool, but... Like, this kind of look, this kind of feel, to me, is good for a movie and not for hours and hours in a game, you know? That's just how I feel about it. I just, I feel depressed just wandering around. Now we're near as depressing as watching this video. Yeah, just this whole open world thing, I just, I guess I just don't get it. Like, ride around, go anywhere you want. You don't really have to f do any of this. You don't have to fight any of these guys, just run away from them. But, uh, if you want to be strong enough to fight a boss, then you need to run around and kill all these guys and start fights. Level up your character and grind a bunch of resources and then pick up something here and then take it over there and then take it sell it to this guy over here and then take it back here and combine these two things to get an upgrade. Now maybe you can go kill the boss and now you here's another big area. Just run around, go go wherever you want, man. Go run up there, go look at this thing over there. But you don't really have to do anything. I just don't get it, dude. You don't get it, yet you just described it. The fuck? It's an open world game. The whole point is that you have a lot of freedom and where to go and what to do. I don't. I don't think I've ever gotten it. And, and it, it, it's so... I don't get it so much that I have no way of evaluating like what's good or bad. Oh, thank God I can finally stop watching this piece of fucking trash. I'm not gonna lie. That was painful for me to sit through. Anyways, that's gonna be about it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more. One like equals one prayer. I can get over the complete brain damage I received while making this video. But anyways, that's it. Peace!